Oh, good evening. Welcome to News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. We're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. I'm Stephen NT. Let's start with the major news highlights of the day. Now, the U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi has lauded Ghana's democratic credentials and contributions to global peace and security. The Speaker, who is leading members of the United States Congressional Black Caucus to Ghana, called on President Kufuado at the Jubilee House. And an Accra High Court has granted bail in the sum of 200,000 CDs each with two shortages to four of the eight accused persons standing trial for the kidnapping of the two Canadians in Kumasi. As part of the bail condition, one of the shortages must be justified. Also tonight, the management of Anglo Gold Ashanti has described the actions of a group of some laid-off workers who picketed at its head office for alleging non-payment of special compensation due them as unfortunate. According to the mining giants, the affected former employers were employees were paid all retrenchment packages due them as far back as 2014, according to a collective agreement. And in Parliament, government has proposed um, to Parliament an increase in communications tax and withdrawal of the luxury vehicle levy imposed in 2018. Finance Minister Ken Furiata requested members of Parliament to consider and approve an amount of over 6.37 billion CDs as supplementary estimates. So those were our major news highlights. You can follow us live on our Facebook Live and follow our live stream also on 3news.com. Let's start with our very first story. Tonight, the U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi has lauded Ghana's democratic credentials and contributions to global peace and security. The Speaker, who is leading members of the United States Congressional Black Caucus to Ghana, called on President Tukufuado at the Jubilee House. The astute United States House Speaker, together with the 12th member Congressional Black Caucus, is in the country for a five-day visit. The Congressional delegation to the Presidency also included House Majority Whip James Clyburn. The congressman said the future of the relationship between Ghana and the United States largely hinges on mutual respect. Fundamental to our being here today is to have a relationship with this great country, a country that came into being my senior year of high school and first year of college. Uh, and we on my college campus look to Ghana with such admiration and such respect. We still hold that today, and we want to come today to say to you how much we appreciate that relationship, and we want it to go forward in such a way. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi praised Ghana for a contribution towards global security. We're proud of the blessing of many Ghanaian Americans, uh, how it's based on security, and we compliment you on the strength of, of uh, Ghana in this continent being an exporter of security and peacekeepers, uh, having peacekeepers uh, on the continent and elsewhere and to, uh, based on our history. And that is the solemn mission we're on, the 400th uh, observance, and based on our future, future of freedom and justice. President Ikofado said Ghana will continue to work towards strengthening relations with the United States. We are we're looking for a new, more progressive agenda between us, which is an agenda where Ghanaian enterprises and American enterprises will get together to promote the economic uh, uh, relations between our two countries, whereby investment by American companies here, and why not? Investments by Ghanaian companies in the, in the American economy become the order of the day. And then we lessen dependence on uh, the, the generosity 
of American taxpayers towards our development. We think it's a, a healthier and more productive relationship that will be developed between our two countries. The House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is expected to address Ghana's parliament on Wednesday. The delegation is also expected to visit the Cape Coast and Alibina castles. And the market-oriented agricultural program is helping improve the livelihood of some farmers in the Upper West region. 12,000 smallholder producer household uh, farmers are targeted to benefit from the program. Here's a report by Godfrey Tanner. The market-oriented agricultural program MOAB supports farmers in sustainable agricultural business opportunities. It targets all 11 districts in the Upper West Region, including neighboring districts of Mampurgu Magduri in the Northeast Region, as well as North Gonja and Solatunakaba in the Savannah Region. It focuses particularly on smallholder family farms and businesses by promoting sustainable and inclusive agriculture value chains to improve livelihoods, income and food security with the target market being the European Union. The smallholder farmers who are mainly into organic produce are engaged in seven crops including mango and granite. Some of the farmers who have taken up the challenge to engage in the organic produce expressed satisfaction in the program, hoping to improve their livelihoods. project mm, is good. Mm. Last I was farming maize. I say I wanted to farm mongoose. On this Exim Bank, when they come, say the, the, the one mongoose farmers apply. I apply 20 acres. They give me 10 acres. I do traffickers. Anytime we are here and do the job here, because when I get the project like this, we you know it's very fine project for us. This is my granite farm. The type of granite is the obolo type. Um, we planted three weeks ago, and the germination wasn't too good, so we did failing. If you look at the lines you could see some new um, germinations. The Upper West Regional Director of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Emmanuel Sasuyabua, said he hopes the program will be expanded to benefit more farmers. We now have to move to a stage where we are exporting maize to neighboring countries and, and far beyond. Okay, now if we have good warehousing, because when, as we are increasing production, we need warehouses. Okay, so that we can uh, store the excesses, you know, before they get bought and exported or whatever. Mm -hmm. The program also targets other components, such as helping pupils to plant trees around their schools, thereby giving them the opportunity to learn more about trees and their importance to the environment. The program is funded by the European Union through its implementing partners. A member of parliament for Wa Central, Rashid Pelpo, has expressed dissatisfaction with uh, politicization in the distribution of fertilizers and other inputs under the Planting for Food and Jobs program. The project in the Wa Central constituency, he says, is skewed to favor one political party against the other. Here's another report by Godfrey Tanner. Planting for Food and Job is one of the government's flagship programs targeted at improving food security, reducing importation of food products and creating employment for the youth. The project basically seeks to address challenges with farming inputs such as seed, fertilizer and extension services coupled with marketing of food and crops. Apart from challenges of smuggling of fertilizers to neighboring countries, some other concerns such as politicization of the policy has been raised. Member of Parliament for War Central Rashid Pelpu is one of such persons who have raised issues about what they say is politicization of the distribution process. In areas where there is too much politicization, like inside war, you know, where there's too much politics going on, people know each other. So when they come with the fertilizer, they look for only those who are members, members of a certain party and give it to them. And, and if they want to plow, they look for they do a plan for your people first, and then when the rest of it, they are unable to get there, that's it. 
He lauded the project but called for a proper implementation to give it a national character. It's a good policy. It can alleviate the pain, the suffering of our people. It can reduce poverty. It can increase food production. But it has to be done properly. You know, the implementation has to be um, ex uh, extensive and has to be accessible to everybody. On his political career, Rashid Pelpu thinks he still has more to offer, even though he indicated some difficulties in properly delivering to his constituents after the loss of power of the NDC. I, I suppose that my value as a representative of the people is still not lost in the, in the years I have said. And I still have a lot of um, commitment to my people and I have a lot of um, I still have a lot of sleeps to be able to, to, to give out to my people. The war central MP hinted he will soon bow out of parliament. Just watch me. It's not going to be too long. I won't be in power in office for too long. Um, after this one, you might hear me talking about getting to the point when I would encourage somebody else to come. The issue is about representation who the people feel comfortable representing them, who they can talk to, they can approach, they can feel when they, he, he represents them. Three other people are in the race to contest for the NDC parliamentary slot for the constituency. Uh, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has threatened a strike if the Ghana Education Service, uh, through the Controller Accountant General's Department, fails to stop deductions for an SIC insurance policy from members by the end of August. At a news conference in Accra, the union insists the deductions are being made without the consent of members. According to the Ghana National Association of Teachers, the policy was introduced in June last year but was stopped after members resisted. Some teachers argued the policy should have been optional. The Ghana Education Service, on hearing their grievances, requested the controller and accountant general to seize the deductions and refund the monies. According to the association, the names of some members who do not want to take part in the policy still have their names enrolled. So far as we, the teacher unions, are concerned, there was no sensitization done anywhere. We have had a lot of reports coming from across the country, from our members, saying that almost every teacher, including those who have exited previously, have been re-enrolled onto the GES SIC policy, whilst they have not committed themselves to that. The leadership of the association has threatened a strike if the deductions are not seized. We are asking the Ghana Education Service to stop the deductions by the end of August. If at the end of August these deductions have not ceased and the money is deducted, refunded to our members, we shall withdraw our services from the 1st of September 2019. Under the policy, 10 CDs is deducted every month from the salary of members. A beneficiary who dies or falls critically ill is giving up to 10,000 Ghana CDs, depending on the medical report, while one involved in a personal accident, based on a degree of injury, would be giving a 6,000 Ghana CD cover. This is still News at 10, live from the News Hub at Desawe Kanda in Accra. You can still follow us on our Facebook Live and on 3news.com. We have more news for you. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, Global Fresh Chopped Fruit and Juice Company, Blue Skies, intends to expand its Ghanaian market hold. The company currently serves a paltry 5% of its products on the Ghanaian market. These were revealed when a delegation from Media General Group called on management of the fresh fruit producing giant at Dobro near Nsawam in the eastern region. The visit by Media General Group, led by the group CEO, Beatrice Ajiman, to Blue Skies Company was to strengthen business ties. She expressed confidence the two unique market leaders in their various fields could build a stronger partnership. We generate original content from our news. We do our own productions with respect to documentaries. I know you have a number of documentaries, but it's important that we do uh, new ones for you to tell the story. If you're willing to partner you, you should be on TV3. Ghana's Most Beautiful is starting um, 
we are launching it on the 11th of August. That's our flagship. I think you should come on board. Founder of Blue Skies, Anthony Pyle, noted the visit by the Media General Group was timely as the company focuses its energy on the local market. Based on the idea that we have a family within each of those families, so people can look to local people to run things as they know. And that way you're respectful of the culture, uh, you understand the, the need and demands of the communities, and of course the important thing is they know actually what they need to understand and learn in order to make it a profitable enterprise. Blue Skies has been producing fresh fruits products since 1998, exporting premium quality freshly cut fruit to supermarkets in Europe before eventually diversifying to supply the local market with freshly squeezed 100% natural juice. The company, an industry leader and a major employer in the private sector with over 6,000 workers, employs the state-of-art technology in its processes. Now to other stories, government is seeking approval for some 6.37 billion CDs as it pushes for a media review of its fiscal policy. Finance Minister Ken Ferreira addressing Parliament proposed an increase in some taxes and an abolition of others uh, government introduced in the last budget. He walks in with his usual brown briefcase sounding biblical. He was emphatic on what is actually he wanted. Fiscal measures are specifically geared towards improving domestic revenue mobilization, reining in expenditures, as well as addressing some critical protracted structural issues in the energy sector. A glimmer of hope for those who protested the imposition of luxury vehicle tax. The government in 2018 introduced the luxury vehicles levy to raise revenue. We have noted suggestions from the general public on the implementation of this tax. And Mr. Speaker, as a listening government, we are proposing to the House the withdrawal of the luxury tax levy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, continue to improve compliance, expand the tax nets, and explore other innovative sources of raising revenue. Furthermore, the telcos might be revising their notes as government is pushing for an increment in the communications service tax. Government proposes to increase the tax to 9% to develop the foundation for the creation of a viable technology ecosystem in the country from 6%. This will comprise, among others, putting in systems to identify and combat cybercrime protect users of information, technology, and combat money laundering and other financial crimes. The increase will not be earmarked, however. The sharing ratio will be adjusted in such a manner that the National Youth Employment Program continue to receive the same proportion as they are currently received. With all this, the government is pushing for an additional funds to spend. I beg to move that this house consider and approve an amount of six billion three hundred and seventy million three hundred and fifty five nine hundred and twenty five point eighty two Ghana cities as supplementary estimates to original appropriation of seventy eight million billion seven hundred and seventy one billion eight hundred and thirty three 600,602.82 Ghana cities to bring the revised total appropriation to 85,142,189,000 Ghana cities. While this review of the fiscal policy for 2019 has been referred to the Finance Committee for a report and subsequent debate on the floor before the House rises this week, the Minister of Finance is certain the country is on the right path to recovery. Meanwhile, the minority spokesperson on finance is accusing the government of further contracting additional debts, which is alarming. What they've said to us is that they are going to increase the communication service tax by 50% from 6 to 9. 
50% increase. And apart from that, they are going to also going to broaden the base of the communication service tax to cover all service provision. It means data. Data. If it's data, then we all know what we use the data for. It's mostly used for WhatsApp. It's mostly used for Facebook. It's mostly used for Instagram. So this is a tax on WhatsApp. It's a WhatsApp tax. It's a, it's, it's a tax on Facebook. It's a tax on Instagram. It's a tax on Twitter. This is something we should all uh, uh, reject it. And so this administration is obviously insensitive to our plight. But what also saddens me is that in the, in the supplementary estimate, he's asking me and you to give him the opportunity to go and spend another 6.3 billion. You know what it means? He said also if you are to look at the appendix 3.6, uh, append, uh, page 62 of this document, they are going to borrow about 3.3 billion Ghana cities. 3.3 billion Ghana cities, slightly more than half, but 52%. They are going to borrow that. So your debt is going to increase. We, are, we can comfortably, comfortably project, but by the end of the year, the debt situation is going to hit about one, almost about 225 billion Ghana cities. That, that would mean an addition of about 105 billion Ghana cities within three years. And we all remember the, the, the inception of this tax, and it was for a purpose. We are not out of the woods yet. Um, talking of un unemployment, talking of um, fixing our uh, YEA, talking of creating opportunities for the young. I think that, look, it is it has gotten to national security levels. Um, not too long ago, we had unemployed graduates associations. Not too long ago, all sort of uh, unemployed associations. We've be, we been able to bring interventions like NAPCO, but we still need a lot more to do. And I'll keep, I'll keep saying that, look, when it comes to revenue generation, Ghana is lacking behind. We are lacking behind in the sense that when you look at the sub-region, most economies with similar structures or structures like ours are doing domestic revenue generation relative to their GDP in excess of 20%. Ghana today is doing 12%. It means that there is some 8% lagging or hiding somewhere. If we need to catch up with development in other, 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 other countries within the sub-region, we have to improve on our domestic revenue mobilization. Will you be surprised if the telcos Hit back. I don't believe that the minister is going to sit in his office and implement such such a, a policy. I believe that there's been engagement with the telco service providers, whatever, within the value chain. And I'm sure that I'm, as a committee, we're going to sit down tomorrow. We are going to look at those reforms in the next in the next coming days. This government has totally disappointed the people of this country by applying the improved oil revenues we are getting because production and uh, 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 price has gone up uh, to uh, to deal with. The, the, the life, uh, uh, the, the improved condition of life of our people, and that is very disappointing. Nothing in this budget would improve anybody's life, rather, sadly, making our condition of life more detrimental. You will really need to reverse this particular energy crisis. And I was happy the minister mentioned that they are going to abrogate that particular clause that shows that take or leave it and pay. Once you use it, you pay. If you don't use it, you don't pay. That aspect of it is going to. And once that agreement is reversed, at least it will open up some latitude. It will bring more hardships. Poor people will begin or will continue to be poor and the rich will continue to be rich because you realize that the measures that are coming, more uh, increase in communication tax. What it means that the moment you say hello, you are being taxed. Right, interesting. So that's how we wrap up with news at 10. Thanks very much for making time on behalf of the crew. Good night.